grace and peace to you from our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, today morning, we are going to reflect on our Holy Gospel reading. Um, in a rural area, one day, three clergy were talking about their problems with the bats and the bakery. The Baptist minister said he tried shooting them, but it didn't solve the problem. And he had a lot of little holes in the belfry from his shotgun. The Methodist minister tried like trapping. He drove far away into the country and let the bats go. But they flew faster than a bat from you know where back to the belfry. The Lutheran minister said he solved his problem. He said, I baptized and confirmed all and they never come back anymore. <laughs> well, actually, <clears throat> many people, after being baptized and confirmed, and then they disappear from the church. Well, you know, through the baptism, actually the door of salvation for them is widely opened up, but when they never come back to the Lord, actually they lose that salvation, given into their baptism. In our Gospel lesson today morning, Jesus Christ is being baptized by John the Baptist. And also his baptism reminds us of our own baptism. Why did Jesus Christ ask John for baptism? Baptism is for the forgiveness of sins and also becoming the children of God. And Jesus didn't need forgiveness, and he was already only the Son of God the Father. No wonder that in St. Matthew's account, John objects to give Jesus Christ the baptism. It is I who need a baptism from you, and yet you come to me. But Jesus Christ insisted on being baptized, showing us his humility. All of Jesus Christ's followers would be baptized. And so Jesus Christ, to want to be baptized to show the significance of baptism and also to show us his unity with all of us. A new family was formed on the day of Pentecost, the church and baptism was the means of entering the Holy Church and also salvation and the kingdom of God. Jewish children at that time were not baptized at all. Jewish boys were circumcised <coughs> within eight days after birth, and Jewish girls had a naming ceremony, but the followers of Jesus Christ would be distinguished by holy baptism. What difference does baptism make to us when Jesus Christ was baptized, the Father spoke and said, You are my Son, the Beloved. My favor rests on you. When we are baptized, the God, the Father, says over each of you and me, You are my Son, you are my daughter, you are my daughter, my Beloved. My favor rests on you. Jesus Christ was anointed with the Holy Spirit when he was baptized in the Jordan River, and that Holy Spirit came to us in our baptism and has been dwelling in us. Let us listen to some of the instructions for the newly baptized in Jerusalem in the early church. Now that you have been baptized into Christ and have put on Christ, you have become conformed to the Son of God, since you share in Christ. It is right to call you Christ, or anointed ones, you have become Christ by receiving the sign of the Holy Spirit. When you emerge from the pool of sacred waters, you are anointed in a manner corresponding to Christ's anointing. That anointing is the Holy Spirit. Christ was anointed with the Holy Spirit. Those beautiful words from the instructions 
even in the early church in Jerusalem, reminding the newly baptized that after baptism, they share deeply in the grace of Jesus Christ. During baptism, when we have received the sign of the Holy Cross on our forehead and on our chest, when the holy water was poured on our forehead, we were sealed and anointed by the Holy Spirit, as the first chapter of Ephesians says, as Christ was anointed a priest, prophet, and king, so you may live always as a member of his body, sharing everlasting life and offering your daily life as a living sacrifice to the Lord. Because of our baptism, we are all united in Jesus Christ. That is why St. Paul in his letters makes a statement like, there is no longer Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female. You are all one in Jesus Christ. Then, what is your vocation and my vocation? since our baptism as a new creation born again in our baptism. Our vocation is being faithful to what is given to us as a father, as a mother, as a husband, and as a wife, as brothers and sisters, as children, as parents and so on, and also to our jobs and as church members. They could go on and on. And also, our vocation is witnessing our Savior Jesus Christ to the world through our daily life. But because we fail every day, we ask for mercy at the beginning of every divine service. Let us listen to again some of the instruction to the newly baptized at Jerusalem in the Holy Church. It is right to call you Christ's or anointed ones. You have become Christ by receiving the sign of the Holy Spirit. When you emerged from the pool of sacred waters, you were anointed in a manner corresponding to Christ's anointing. Ernest Gordon's miracle on the river Kwai tells us an impressive story. During the Second World War, the Scottish soldiers, forced by their Japanese captors to labor on a jungle railroad, had degenerated to barbarous behavior. But one afternoon, something happened. A shovel was missing. The Japanese officer in charge became enraged. He demanded that the missing shovel should be produced, or else, when nobody and the squadron budget, the Japanese officer got his gun and threatened to kill them all on the spot. It was obvious the officer meant what he had said. Then finally, one man stepped forward. The Japanese officer put away his gun, picked up a shovel, and beat the man to death. When it was over, the survivors picked up the bloody corpse and carried them to the second tool check. This time, no shovel, no shovel was missing. Indeed, there had been a miscount at first check point. The word spread like wildfire through the whole camp. An innocent man had been willing to die to save the others. The instant had a profound effect. <clears throat> the men began to treat each other like real brothers. When the victorious allies swept in, the survivors, who were just a human, skele human skeletons, lined up in front of their captors. And instead of attacking their captors, insisted, no more hatred, 
no more killing. Now what we need is forgiveness. Sacrificial love truly has transforming power. In fact, Jesus Christ poured down that kind of sacrificial love on the cross and in our baptism onto each of you and me so that we are totally born again as a totally different new creation becoming the precious of children of God. I hope that this amazing blessings of our Lord for the dog and holy baptism strengthens our body, our soul, and our heart to life everlasting that we may joyfully walk with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ each and every day to life everlasting. And also we share the love of Jesus Christ with the people around us becoming a little Christ to them. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your heart and mind in Jesus Christ our Savior, both now and forever.